To, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Very good. You ready for Very everyday good. life, Saint? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very good. Very good. You ready for Very everyday good. life, Saint? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very good. Um, brother, I wondered to, as I said last week, we we left off. Um, uh, I I don't recall everything we we we, we discussed, but I do recall. Um, we were on the subject of music. I remember. We, yes, music and um, its its um, connection to unity, because I think right. you, uh, uh, music as a as a um, unspoken language, as this uh, universal language, um, has a quality and a purpose of unifying our consciousness without words. Uh, which is quite a remarkable thing. And uh, it has its own language, its own frequencies, its own mathematical uh, constituencies and, and uh, qualities that speak to us without words, which is um, remarkable, just as our vision um, speaks to us also without words. When we look out, we, we see something that we now call a tree, but if we didn't have the word, we would still see this thing. Uh, so we, that, that means that, well, if I want to talk to you about what I'm seeing, I have to give it a name, right? And then we have to agree on this name. And when I speak the word, then you realize, well, okay, I'm talking about a tree. And I ask you, did you see that tree? Do you know this tree? Do you know its fruit? But musically, we don't have to do that. If I um, play a, a lullaby on a lyre uh, here or in um, Tibet or in China or in South Africa or where, wherever, that same lullaby, that same sequence of uh, notes and uh, whatever follows the melody is going to speak to whoever without words. And everyone is going to recognize the quality and the message and the purpose of that thing. That is, if they're on Fitra. And what I mean by that is, well, if I'm playing a lullaby and it's sort of creating a, shall we say, a spirit of peace, then everyone on Fitra will recognize that and probably just hum along with it once they recognize the flow and the sequence of the um, uh, melody and um, just enter into that spirit. But there are others who are not on Fitra, who are anti-Fitra, who would uh, be adverse to that thing and they wouldn't want to experience it because it would uh, create an unease which I could say, well, that's equivalent to some form of judgment, and it's a kind of a self-judgment you would. So I'm saying, well, all of that is done without words, you see, without language. So music is a language. It speaks to us. Now, the same thing that would divide the quiescent listener, no matter where they were in the world, the person who on, who's on Fitra, uh, from the person who's not on Fitra, without words, is this thing that I want to discuss, you see, today. This, this thing of division. Now, you, <laughs> I see that smile on your face. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking your language. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, now, if we take that a, a step further, dear brother, uh, before I hand the floor over to you, um, and please take your, time. Play, take your time and unpack okay. this. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to unpack it um, because it's it's been building up in me for about a week or so since we last met. And I'm working with um, some people now on this whole concept of marriage. And fortunately, thank God, your wife and my wife uh, just had a nice meeting yesterday. Yes, I heard. Uh, it. Discussing the same topic, and you yeah. know, it's 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 a great problem. Okay, it's a great problem, and as I seek to unpack 
this thing i'm i'm saying well this thing is just this relationship that we're having our wives are now having is just kind of flowing right along mm -hmm. with some sort of uh, unseen flux which is being recognized um, uh, in a language that doesn't have any words so you and i and our wives are communicating with and without words you see so there's a unity taking place here that is going across um, limitations limitations of time and space uh, if you will and uh, this is a living manifestation of guidance i have to say that now in doing that and my concern is is with uh, marriage well uh, what are we talking about with marriage um we're still talking about a, a unity of vision you see the sing the singular vision you see that's the goal for the male and the female the the two genders the two partners uh i hate i i shouldn't use that word partners i'll just stick with the uh, spouses i like i'm going to be old-fashioned here we'll stick with spouses and the hell with this postmodern uh, terminology we'll stick with spouses okay so the spouses join and they have to be male and female they can't be otherwise in order to complete this unity of vision so i'm reminded here of the myth of um of um uh, hermaphrodite okay um hermaphrodite is uh, a name that um, is comprised of two names the parents of uh this uh, creature um hermaphrodite is the parents one the father was hermes the mother was aphrodite and uh, they got together and spawned this thing that was called hermaphrodite and hermaphrodite was doing okay until he met a nymph and this nymph uh, fell in love with him and would let, wouldn't let him go. And uh, he tried to get away from her. And he was he was just a young lad. He wasn't ready for any kind of union. He was still trying to figure out who he was. And he didn't know, you see. And so he's running from this nymph. And the nymph grabs a hold of him. They fall into the water. And she won't let go. And while they're wrestling in the water underneath the waves, she chants a, a prayer to the gods and and say something to the effect let me never leave him let him never let go of me this sort of thing something like that in the name of whoever and lo and behold they are joined in one body but their identities are joined so that this creature that is a result as the answer to the prayer is both male and female oh well okay so we know hermaphrodites are born um but before i let you try to unpack this i just want to bring some scientific uh, facts uh to our listeners a true hermaphrodite has a genetic disorder which uh, does not allow them to develop normally as either a male or a female so they have qualifications physical qualifications of both genders some of them have undeveloped uh, uh, breasts some of them have developed breasts some of them have undeveloped genitalia some of them have genitalia which are both masculine and, and uh, feminine so it's a confusing thing the doctor takes a look when it comes out of the womb and scratches their head and they didn't know what to do until recently and it's still news for some people because then they have to figure out, well, which gender are we going to bring this child up? Mm -hmm. It's a big problem because it has to do with identity, mm -hmm. you see. Uh, and identity is very important to us because without the firm grasp of our identity, we can't really communicate with any spouse uh, and in order to unify the vision and progress with this unified vision that's going to achieve a godly purpose if i can use that phrase so um what the doctors have to do now they used to just okay well his uh, phallus looks a little bit more developed so we're just raising a male 
or the vagina is a little bit more developed. So we'll just expand it and raise him, raise this creature, raise her as a female. But they didn't know something. And that is that the brain is also genderized. You see, the brain becomes either masculine or feminine uh, by the end of the third month in the womb. So by 12 weeks, you have a masculine or feminine brain, it, irregardless of what your, um, uh, your bodily gender is, you see. So it doesn't matter. You can have a, a perfectly fine male uh, physiology and uh, 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 body with a full, uh, you know, phallus, but you could have a female brain if you don't have the right amount of antigen uh, bathing the development of your brain in the womb by the 12th week of gestation. And this is also the true for the opposite. So they used to bring up these hermaphrodites without knowing this. And so they would, uh, they would uh, improve the phallus as best they could and then bring the child up as a um, male, you see only to find out later that the child had a female brain, a feminine brain, and vice versa is also true. So the reason I'm bringing this up is that there's scientific data to back up what I'm, I'm saying. I'm not speaking, you know, uh, unadvisedly. This is scientific knowledge now. And the doctors are finally getting it and they're waiting for the brain to tell them by the age of 18 months whether or not this child is uh, has a male or a female brain, because you can tell by then already. Uh, and then they decide uh, whether to dress them in blue or pink. Okay. Uh, so what I'm talking about here is a discernment of something that's very, very important and fundamental to human nature and human identity and the expression of our identity. Now, remember, the hermaphrodite in this wonderful Greek myth, because I'm sure I say wonderful because it's, yeah, you, know, you say, well, it's a bit strange. Okay, so it's strange. But they're trying to teach us something here in this myth. And this boy did not fully recognize his identity before this nymph, nymph grabbed him, you see, and then made this prayer and ruined his identity. Now, some people say, oh, well, the best person for a high priesthood, especially amongst the Jewish capitalists, is an hermaphrodite, you see? That's what they say. And uh, I'm sure that they don't all agree on this, but that is not um, a meager statement. It's, it's fully recognized by major schools in Jewish theology, especially of the Kabbalist type, yeah. you see, that the hermaphrodite is the best high priest. Well, that's that, what, what we're saying there is, hey, Aaron wasn't good enough, or was Aaron a hermaphrodite, and the Bible kept that secret from us? I mean, you know, what's going on here? They know better than we do. No, no, I want to unpack this mystery a bit for our listeners so that we can um, begin to unravel the confusion, dear brother, that um, is confronting this postmodern uh, generation who's suffering from gender chaos, if you will, uh, because this is, a, this is a big problem now. They're taking kids... Uh, they're confusing them, and then they're changing their gender, and they're ruining their lives, you see, without clear definition. So I want to try and get a handle on the adab of this unification in terms of um, gender identity and what this means not only for the sexes, but also for the metaphysical understanding the separation of the um, uh, consciousness from the unconsciousness, as I heard you speak in one of your lectures elsewhere, that uh, this is somehow referred to Adam and Eve or the separation of the male and the female. Well, yeah, we can, we can do that. 
And before I hand the floor over to you, let me just say one more thing in that regard. And I hope I'm not talking too fast for our listeners. Um, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want them to lose sight of the ball here, <laughs> but I'm bouncing it all over the wall. We're, we're in, we're in a full court press here. You know, you ever play handball where that thing whizzes around pretty fast, doesn't it? Oh yeah. You can lose sight of it and you're looking around and hitching the back of the head before you know it. Um, anyway, before there was this, um, <clears throat> division, shall we say, uh, male from female, uh, male and female, if we, if we refer to that as the consciousness and the subconsciousness, there was some form of a unified vision, you see. So if there was a division, you see, the, the, the course, the challenge to us seems to be to bring this back, you see, and we want to do that and it looks like allah has arranged in his wisdom in his you know uh, i i magnificent i don't there's not enough word to, to to there's not a word to describe this magnificence you see in his wisdom to create the male and the female to bring this vision together and unless we get this thing right you see uh in marriage, that vision isn't going to come together for either person, for either spouse, you see. There has to be unification. And if then unification is manifest as the marriage, you see, it also represents a marriage with heaven because that is a continual theme, a constant theme throughout the scripture. Now, it's not that big a deal in the Quran but that doesn't mean the Quran is ignoring it, you see, because the Quran is, Quran is really concerned about marriage and it makes marriage easy instead of difficult. Well, it seems to me Muslims have made marriage difficult and perhaps maybe too easy uh, in to, to come and go, you see, in and out of a marriage at, at the um, deference, at deference to the male chauvinist and not to the woman, you Absolutely. see. So we're not paying attention to the subconscious here, okay? If it's, if it's truly uh, represented by the um, fair gender, the, the female, you see. Not that the female is subconscious, I'm not say, saying that at all, not, a, not that she's lit, subliminal, but we are suppressing that. We are not uh, bringing it forward, we're not addressing that because well, if we're going to do this, before there was this, it was already, we were already together. Great point. You see, that, that vision was unified. Something happened. Now, there's a couple of things that happened, made, made it worse. One of the things, well, Allah separated it so that the two could develop independently, but yet collectively. So you have independent vision, uh, and but it's unified, and then you have a collective vision that should be unified. This is a challenge, and it requires communication. Well, why did he do that? All right, I'm one. I'm doing a Jordan Peterson here. You know, <laughs> why did he do that? Well, he did that so that um, <clears throat> the marriage would reflect his desire to communicate with us. You see, so that. Our vision and his vision is unified, you see? Uh, that's my take on it right now. I haven't gone beyond that. That's about as far as I'm gonna take it right now, but that's the purpose of marriage. It's not just to have you know, sexual gratification. It's not just to reproduce children. It's to pay, pay homage to Allah by joining our vision to his vision to, to complete the purpose of his creation, you see, of our creation as his uh, creatures, as his servants, uh, uh, you know, uh, companions, if you will. There, there's one passage in the Old Testament calls Abraham his friend. Abraham is my friend. 
well, who's Abraham, the father of the monotheist religion? Well, if he's the father of the monotheist religion, let me do another Jordan Peterson here. Doesn't that mean that, gosh, we're supposed to be like our father and become God's friend? Oh, my goodness me. Why do they make it so difficult, brother? Why? Why? What? This oh, is why. oh, oh, this oh, is why. oh, 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 is that why? Oh, separation oh, makes my. plenty of money. Yeah, okay. So you, got the, you got the idea. Did, did, did I say enough to spark the interest of our listeners here? I believe so. And you can jump right. back into the double judge, uh, the double judge rope anytime you get ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, brother. Uh, inshallah, I'm going to hand the floor over to you. What does Nunetics have to offer us as we seek to unveil this? Uh, problem that men and women are having with the unification of their marriage, of their relationship, of their families, of their vision, and of their relationship with Allah. What does Nudetics have to teach us, dear brother? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Guidance that he got our hearts, he got our tongues, hearts, he got our tongues, and then he deliver us safely to the goals that we innocently seek. Let's first uh, begin by discussing what Allah says about this goal and what Allah says about this oneness that he has actually ordained not only for human life, but for all life in the universe or multiverse or whatever they want to refer to it as. Mm. Matter itself is one. Mm. Spirit is one. And I believe that what the majority of people who tackle this subject are missing is the continuity in matter, mm -hmm. the continuity also in the nature of the spirit that Allah has created within us called the Ruh in mm -hmm. the Quran. Now, I believe what we're missing is a proper understanding of what the Quran calls al-fitra, the word that we mm -hmm. like to bounce back and forth between each other. But it may be that some, or maybe even many in the audience don't quite understand yet what the fitra is or what it mm -hmm. represents. Fitra is merely the Arabic word for what in English we would call pattern recognition. In fact, I'm believing that the English word pattern comes from the Arabic word fitra. If you exchange the P with the F, mm -hmm. you have PTR in pattern with the N being a suffix and you have FTR, F and P being interchangeable in the word fitra with the H being a suffix. Mm -hmm. So pattern and fitra represent the same thing. So what are we discussing when we talk about the pattern of a thing in creation? We're talking essentially about two things two things and those two things are how a thing looks in its form mm -hmm. and how a thing behaves in its function mm -hmm. cool. when you separate out the form from the function the form might be pleasing but the function might be dysfunctional yes and this is what has happened amongst many, many human beings on this planet, mm -hmm. that we take pride in the outer appearances of things, mm -hmm. how she looks, you know, how she walks, you know, how mm -hmm. she talks, you know. Mm -hmm. But when we get to know what's going on in the inside as a functionality, that's when we become displeased and distanced from that particular mm -hmm. person. This could be male or female. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> The science behind understanding oneness in creation is to understand the duality nature of creation, and that is that it is composed of both form and function. The sun in the sky has a form. Any child mm -hmm. can draw that form on a piece of drawing paper. Sure. The tree outside has a form, and practically any child also, five, six, seven, 12 years old, can draw the picture of a tree, can draw the picture even of a house, on mm -hmm. a piece of paper, can draw a stick man, a stick figure, right? On mm -hmm. a piece of paper. Right, sure. But if you ask that same five-year-old or that 10-year-old or that 12-year-old or even that 18-year-old, how does the sun do what it does? Is it really rising and setting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is yeah. that ball of gas? What is it? What else is it made of? Mm -hmm. 
how is it made of hydrogen when hydrogen is connected with water? <laughs> you, know yeah. what? That, right. you would leave that child just scratching her head. I, sure. I don't know, daddy. I don't, right? So knowing the form of a thing is one thing, but knowing mm -hmm. how a thing functions is uh, different. And it's the same thing with human life. We know the forms of humans. We look at a person, we mm -hmm. see one head, we see two arms, we see two legs and, a, and genitalia. We say, oh, that's a human being, not necessarily. Yes. Because you're mm -hmm. identifying the form without being introduced to the function. Are they mm -hmm. functioning like a human? So now let's get to the point of human functionality. Sure. In the Quran, Allah speaks about this oneness that we're discussing, and we'll discuss it under the word Tawheed from this point on. Mm -hmm. Oneness, unity in matter, and also the unity between the human matter and the source creator as the source of all things in the universe. There's a unity between ourselves and that God that we speak about. Yes. And that unity is not a distant relationship. No, it is no. on some points because Allah has powers and controls that go way, way above human discernment and our ability to even figure out how this is done. <laughs> you know, how does God do that? So there is a distance, but Allah has built enough into the Quran to suggest that we are as close as Allah says in the Quran and that he is even closer to us than our juggler vein. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, that's very close. My wife can't get yes, that. Close to me. Mm, right. <laughs> ah, sure. Yeah. So Allah is as close to us as the vein that feeds blood from the heart to the brain mm -hmm. and back. Right. Mm -hmm. So what does Allah say? He says that he created us min nafsin wahida. S O N L. Nafs N A F S L. Nafs N A F S. Anytime you hear the letters N and F in any Arabic word, it can be nafs, it can be nafathati, it can be uh, nafakha, when Allah said mm -hmm. he breathed into the khalifa of his ruh, of his spirit, he uses the word nafakha. So wherever you hear mm -hmm. nafa, nafa, naf represents the breathing that's done through the nostrils, mm -hmm. the breathing that's done through the nostrils, mm -hmm. And the F represents the breathing that is done through the open mouth. Mm -hmm. So those are your two major sources of breathing. That means that your soul, since it contains the words N and F, the soul is also a breathing exercise. Mm -hmm. So in ancient India, they might have the word prana. You know, in other societies, they have other words for deep breathing, for meditative breathing, breathing and sure. that kind of thing. The Quran uses the word ruh mm -hmm. to represent the breath. Mm -hmm. And breath, breathing is reciprocal. So now we're getting an understanding of what the human being is as a functionality. The human being has to be reciprocal. He has to, she has to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. You make me feel good, I make you feel good. Yes. You take care of me, I take care of you. That's reciprocity in a relationship. That's correct. Yes. Within that one unit called nafsin wahida, wahid, wahida means oneness. It means when you bring all of the necessary components together and power pack them into one composition, that's wahid, okay? Mm. So that's how Allah created the original human soul. That means that all of the ingredients that go into both male and female were originally created as that one composite that you spoke of. Yes. Then we're separated. Allah says, created then Zawjaha, its mate. And then mm -hmm. from the two of them, Allah says, He spread multiples, men, women, so forth. Yes. Like more yes. Multiples. All right. But all of those multiples came out of that one. Sure. So as you said, it begins as a composite. It then splits mm -hmm. and separates for purposes of gaining experience in the world and whatever Allah created those separations to do. Mm -hmm. But he did not create those separations to stay permanently separated. He created them to gain the experience and then bring it back to one table and share it so that you might experience that one composite life again, but on a much more evolved level. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going too far for some people. No, no. This means that consciousness is a product of experience absolutely and it's intended 
that you bring those qualities and those qualifications back to one table called the human table. Yes. Not the racial table. Yes. yes Not even yes. the gender table. Yes. This is yes. for us gotcha. men. You women yes. have to make it on your own. No, no not no. for uh, the the uh, elderly class of priests, you know, and, and their concerns. Sure. No. Mm -hmm. Whatever we get in this experience in the world, in the dunya, as it's called in the Quran, the dunya, mm -hmm. we have to bring that back to one centralized table so that we can service human concerns. Okay, and that's so, the communion. Yes. That's the communion. That is the truest meaning for communion. Yes, I got you. Because without communion, mm -hmm. you cannot have community. You cannot have com common unity without a communion. Yeah. So all you have is the outer form. You have that's the it. facade, that, but that's you it. don't have the inner. Okay, that's gotcha. correct. We're, supposed, like, we're like, full circle there. That's yes, wonderful. indeed. Yes, indeed. It's like the old Western movies that used to use the facades on the yes, the, yes, on the, yes, sta on the mm -hmm. sta on stage on the uh, mm -hmm. set. And it looked like a real Western town from the outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you go through the door, you see nothing but a bunch of props, wooden props. Mm -hmm. That's yes. how human beings have been trained to become. Yes. A lot yes. of stuff on the outside. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you step through the door of that human life, there's nothing mm -hmm. but weak pieces of wood holding it up. Mm -hmm. You know, Allah Gosh. uses that, Allah uses that to describe the mm -hmm. hypocrites in the Quran. Mm -hmm. gotcha yeah that's why they call the place where they shoot those sets they call them hollow wood they call it hollywood Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ain't nothing, yeah. ain't no, nobody that's, home that's a nice play <laughs> that's a, that's a nice i'm just play acting this is not okay. really me yeah, i'm just yeah, playing yeah, the part right. being the part of humans but they're not true humans because yeah. they're not service they're not true humans because yeah. they're not servicing true human concerns now, mm -hmm. Allah has created the male with a measure of uh, advantage. We don't want to say superiority, but he has created yes. the male with a measure of advantage. And he says this mm -hmm. in the Quran, that advantage is called a fiddle. We won't get into the meaning of the word right now. Suffice mm -hmm. it to say that the advantage is circumstantial. It's not a biological. Mm -hmm. It's circumstantial because he's freer than she is with her having the issue of being able to be pregnant and having mm -hmm. to raise those children and she feels closer mm -hmm. to them emotionally and so mm -hmm. on. so uh, nature the fitra has assigned her gender a particular role but it's not hard and fast she might not be able to get pregnant or he yes. might be better at raising children than she yes, you know? so there's sure. other dynamics involved mm -hmm. so we don't want to make it a hard and fast rule like god said the man must go out in right. the sweat of his yes, brow right. you know like genesis tells us right yes yes the Quran doesn't say all of that. The Quran merely says that the men are the maintainers and providers over the women because he has given them more fiddle. Mm -hmm. He has given, and I listen to the language. He doesn't say because he has given the man more advantage than the woman. He says because he has given one more advantage than the other. Mm -hmm. So that one that he's given the advantage to might be the female. Yes. And therefore, she becomes in charge of the household economics. Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> he becomes in charge of the children and picking them up from school. You get it? Yes. Got it. This is the wisdom of the Quran. It makes mm -hmm. everything balanced. Yes. Be so that when you run into a particular set of circumstances that might not be the norm, you can mm -hmm. still make the adjustment. Yeah. Now, yeah. that is given only within the parameters of what nature has provided. Now, if nature mm -hmm. has not provided on the most part hermaphrodites, mm -hmm. then we can't turn the whole world into a world that accommodates hermaphrodites. Mm -hmm. If Allah has not created the average human male to be a female <laughs> or to feel like a female, then why are we encouraging through media the whole mm -hmm. thing about a, a, a three-year-old or a five-year-old now exploring mm -hmm. his little five-year-old feelings to determine whether he wants to be a boy in the future yeah. or whether he wants yeah. to be a girl what do you feel like little seven-year-old and they mm -hmm. start giving them these gender changing uh, chemical yes, pharmaceuticals yes. Yeah, to begin is... changing them on the biological level so what are they doing they're interfering with the neurology mm -hmm. they are interfering with the psychology mm -hmm. and they are 
and will eventually interfere very drastically with the sociology of that mm -hmm. child, how that child socializes. Yes, yeah, sure. So this is where the mess up has occurred. And we, as students of the Dean of Al-Islam, mm -hmm. are then obligated to go throughout the Quran and look for remedies, mm -hmm. not look for how to exacerbate the tensions, not look for how to finger point and say, you fags, you, you lesbian. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, that's not what we do. Mm -hmm. Whatever that situation is, it's a situation that Allah has not necessarily willed, but he has actually and absolutely allowed it to happen because these are a part of the challenges that human beings go through. These are part of the challenges that we have to go through in order to strengthen that, uh, that gift that we are to bring back to that central table. So when we come yeah. back to the table, we are mm -hmm. much more reinforced and fortified than when yes. we began. Mm -hmm. So, Ben created us from one es one essential substance or soul. Then from there, he split that soul, and this is also biology, as you know, being an MD, that it begins with one life germ, and then it splits, dipole, whatever the medical term, mm -hmm. is, you know, and then it becomes a three and more under mm -hmm. the magnifying glass, right? So this is not something unlike what is happening in nature. We're talking about the soul, but the soul is part and parcel of nature and nature follows a fundamental pattern. And that's the word we started out with when we mentioned fitra. Mm -hmm. Nature is following a pattern. Yeah. So the question mark becomes, how do we return to that original fitra? Mm. Yeah. Now that sounds like a difficult question. Yes, it sure and does. It, it can be a difficult question, but it's only difficult for those who pay very little, if any, attention to the fitra. Mm -hmm. If you're not paying attention to patterns, you're going to miss it. Sure. People who say a male can become a female, all we have to do is snip, 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 mm -hmm. tuck, tuck, fold, fold and the male can become a female, or the mm. female can become a male. They're not paying attention to Allah's fitra. Of course not. Built into the fitra is the answer to that problem. Mm -hmm. It's like interlocking puzzle pieces. Yes. Can my piece interlock into your piece would be the question mm. you asked the female. Yes. Okay, great. The male needs to ask the male, can my puzzle piece fit and lock very securely into your puzzle piece? And the answer is no, not unless I approach you through the wrong doors, says the Quran says. Yes. <laughs> Quran, yes Allah yes. says, and enter through the proper doors. <laughs> well, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. The people entering through the backyard where there's trash and debris and fleas, mm -hmm. and vermin and lice, and you don't want to go back there in the backyard. No. You pay attention to, to the upkeep of the backyard. You pay mm -hmm. attention to what the presentation is in the front of the house, right? Yes, right. But it's the same thing with gender. We're supposed to pay attention to what Allah has created in the front of this house. Am mm -hmm. I taking care of this? Is this properly washed and presentable? Yes. And you say, well, now, are, is, is, is what I'm presenting now qualified enough for you to enter? See? Mm -hmm. That's that gender. That's that oneness that we're talking about. And yeah. we'll be coupled together then we're bringing our respective experiences into the equation yes. and that's where we can have proper dialogue but mm -hmm. if we're trying to dialogue and create a relationship with someone who is 90 percent what you are mm -hmm. what's there to talk about yeah it ain't there no it's not there and it won't be there because you you want to believe it's there so that's you can problem. pretend that it's there, but it ain't there. Oh, listen, we live in a world of pretending and pretending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a song once called "The Great Pretender." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm the great pretender. I remember yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know that pretense nature is also given to us in the Quran, and we'll discuss it on another day. I'd like to have an extended conversation about what El Bakara means in the Quran. Mm -hmm. They call mm -hmm. it the heifer. Mm -hmm. Yes, but Al Bakara is speaking also to that pretense, mm -hmm. it's a psychological factor that people bring who are social scientists and social manipulators, as I call them. They have a, a, a particular ideology that they practice. They invented it and they practice it, and it's called I call it the heifer mentality. Mm -hmm. Heifer simply means that you're pretending to be that which you are not. 
Mm -hmm. And why is that said? And I can explain it in 60 seconds. Go on. The life of a cow begins as a calf, C-A-L-F. Mm -hmm. After two years old, it becomes a heifer. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't become a full-blown mother cow until it gives birth. Right. So no matter how old it grows, if it has not gotten pregnant and delivered another calf into the world, mm -hmm. it's still a heifer, no matter how big it is. Yeah. It's just a baby Huey heifer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. All right. So if the cow becomes older than three years old, maybe even four, and still hasn't gotten pregnant, mm -hmm. it appears in the form to be fully grown. Yes. But as a functionality, the, cat, the the heifer is still lacking. Yes, yes. See, so yes. when our grandmothers used to call the friend, the girlfriend of her granddaughter, a little heifer. I don't know if you remember yeah. this language. Yeah, right? yeah, I remember very that. popular yeah. in the African American mm -hmm. community. Yeah. Say, listen, uh, the, you know, listen, uh, Sally, you only twelve years old. Mm -hmm. Why are you hanging out with that heifer? Yes, yes. Now, what yes. she meant by heifer is that Sally's friend was 13 years old, but she was mm -hmm. dressing like she was 23. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's she right. wants to wear the mm -hmm. mini skirt. She's, mm -hmm. she's got her, her cleavage showing, you know, mm -hmm. the yes. girl is in junior high school. Right. See? So mm -hmm. she's pretending to be adult. Yes. That's why grandma called her a heifer. Mm -hmm. So this is an ideology that world religions have uh, practiced, mm -hmm. they have actually used this as a psychology in the world to divide us from ourselves and from other people like us. That's mm -hmm. why Moses had to tell those people, slay the heifer. Mm -hmm. In other words, that pretense thing in you that wants to pretend that you're something that you're not, that wants mm -hmm. to be seen as the Quran says, you know, the, 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 just the beauty, the brightness in the eyes of the beholder, when they would look at that heifer, they couldn't turn away. Just like that woman who's walking around with her breasts hanging out, yeah, her, right. booty, her booty shaking mm -hmm. as she passes you, yeah. your eyes just can't turn away. You have mm -hmm. to have a tremendous amount of discipline to turn away from that, right? But is, this is adolescent purience, it's immaturity. Absolutely. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, so, absolutely. Gotcha. So That's we have to bring yeah. that. Yeah. We have to be able to isolate out the artificial separations and differences amongst humans. Mm -hmm. And we have to then accentuate those differences that were intended to be brought back to the table for discussion, for the further enhancement of human life, the internal functional life, not the form. Mm -hmm. Many things can happen to the form. If uh, Dr. Steve, uh, I think his name was uh, Stephen Hawkins, mm -hmm. one who sat in the wheelchair speaking. Yes, to yes, two, gotcha. If he mm -hmm. were here, he would tell you, yeah, I wish I had been blessed with a better form. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing wrong with his functionality. No, yeah. yeah. He his was able to okay. fulfill his duties as a scientist. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. agree or disagree with some of his theories or whatever. That's sure. There, but he was still sure. functional inside. Mm -hmm. Yes. Most of us have been made uh, likable and even lovable on the level of form. But many of mm -hmm. us create a distaste in people's mouths because of how we function. We're actually <clears throat> dysfunctional on the most part. And I'm talking about yeah. the average person that you meet in the supermarket is humanly dysfunctional because they have no clue what this is it's called the fitra. Mm -hmm. They have no clue that these are instructions in the, in the, in the universe. Yes. The tree is an instruction mm -hmm. to further elucidate how you are supposed to grow as a human. Yes. Yes. You have to be structured. You have to be balanced. You have to have symmetry. So yes. Allah didn't create all of these things just for us to say that's beautiful. You know, he didn't mm -hmm. do it for purely aesthetic reasons. He did it for reasons of fortifying the human intellect. Yes. See, mm -hmm. so I'm going to let you jump in to the rope right now, and then I'll, I'll say some concluding things. And uh, wh whatever I missed, just let me know that. I didn't touch on it and you'd like for me to. You know. Okay. I, I think this is very dynamic what we're talking. Thank you very much, brother. Uh, this helps to provide solutions for some of the conundrums we face. Um, we're now in a, I think there's a prophecy and I forget one of the greater prophets said that, you no, know, 
if you don't if you don't complete this vision, if you don't join form to function, then you're going to have heifers ruling over you. You're going to have you're going to have women and children ruling over you, and that's yes, what we've got. We've reached and that. what what it means by that is we we've got immature people in positions of power and authority making decisions that affect the political flow of power. You see. And uh, it's not necessarily flowing in the right direction right now. So let me just resummarize in imaginative form. Okay, so we, we have these the separation, but each gender has to mature its own vision to unify its vision within itself, to unify its intellect, its consciousness with the subconscious. Yes. Okay. Well, so, so you get to a certain age and you say, well, what that means is you say, dad, what, why did I do that? I don't understand why I did that. Then your dad says, oh, well, you know, what you were feeling, you weren't thinking about. All right. Think before you do. Mm -hmm. And so often we have a subliminal feeling that we just act on that before we think about the consequences. Um, and this is what Musa was doing when he was with al Kidder. You see, he was he was um, uh, reacting emotionally to things that were already set in him as these props that you talk about that were holding up a, a, a sort of adolescent uh, Musa. He wasn't fully mature yet. Right. OK, right. so That's so right. Akitter said, look, I'm going to give you three chances. If you don't grow up, you're out of here. I, I don't have time for your foolishness. You just, you know. It's it's like you know you're you're being initiated, uh, and you're learning the skill, yeah. and so you're an apprentice, and you become a journeyman, and then you can enter the the, the field of getting finally getting the salary instead of just a roof over your head and some food in your in your bowl. Hey, you become a master. You're yeah. on the same level with you. Never become the superior of your teacher, but you can enter that period. We the period we call the master. Yes. So when you go to your dad or your mentor or your teacher and you say, you know, I scratched my head and I've done this. I scratched my head. I don't know why I I did that. And then somebody who's wiser than you, who knows more than you, says, well, you know, you've got all this subconscious repressed. Uh, Vitra that never put the fractals together. Beautiful. They never put the pieces of the puzzle together, and mm -hmm. you're just acting mm -hmm. on an enmeshed emotions here. You don't know why you're doing something. And I say, yeah, I don't know why. Why I'm not doing it? I want. That's why I'm sitting here. Please tell me why. You know, I gotta know. I got. I gotta stop making these mistakes. You see. Yeah. So, what we want to do is we want to unify this consciousness with the unconsciousness in other words to think before we act and to sort things out as best as we can which is why we need us we we need a shura you see as individuals we need our parents we need our uncles our aunts our teachers we to to help us to sort these things out so we don't go off kilter that's not happening anymore i have so many students that nobody's taught them anything about the reality or orientation, which is one of the reasons we're having this discussion here, you see, because as we play this checker or chess game back and forth here, we're moving, I'm moving to towards you, you're moving towards me. And this isn't a game of uh, winner takes all. No, this is a game of exchange. As you said, yes. we got to exchange. We got to make an exchange here. <laughs> yes. See? I got to ask the right questions. You got to give the right answers. And sometimes I have to resummarize these things so that the students who are listening to us can complete the picture. Oh, complete the picture. We want to unify it. Oh, my God. What's he talking? Yeah. Look, woman, you got to get your picture together before you say yes. And look, yeah. man, oh, you yeah. got to get yeah. your picture together as best as you can before you ask her. All right. Do our pieces meet? Do our pieces of the puzzle, do they match each other? Can we complement each other? And I am I just read, wrote this book on sexology, and I've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt it cannot happen in the LGB community. They can approach it as best as they possibly can, but it cannot be completed. No. Okay? no. It just can't be done. 
And these people cannot be put in positions of authority because this um, mat- level of maturity that goes beyond heferdom, they can't reach it. And if they reach it, they can't keep it because you can only keep it if you maintain the relationship. That's right. So, and, uh, okay, well, what do you mean by that, doctor? My husband's dead. Well, you remember your husband. He was a good man, don't you? You had a good marriage. You can live the next 20, 30 years without him in the memory of that unification, which was perfected, you see? And that gives you this maturity. So that allows this woman to have a seat at the ring of eldership, at the shura, as an advisor to the youngsters. This is no longer happening, brother. Not at all. It's not happening. The kids are running around making all these mistakes and nobody's got the right answers. They're running to these government agencies and who's in charge? The heifers. <laughs> Will you, have I completed Have I completed that summary? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap back in because there's something yeah, go that, ahead, I go to, right ahead. that I want to speak to that you said that was so yes. profound. Uh, number mm-hmm. one, you spoke about the word immaturity and also mature, being mature. Yes, yes. And in nunetics, the letters M and N are interchangeable. They're called nasals. Yes, you're N, M, they're called mm-hmm. nasals because you're. you're I remember nasal. that. Yeah, yeah. So I can take the word mature, take the M off, and put the N in. Now, what word mm-hmm. do you have? See, you have nature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, as we mature within a household, the mother especially, but also the dad, is supposed to remain conscious of our ongoing development. So that yes. you turn a certain age, when puberty sets in, so forth, they don't treat you like they did when you were just a toddler. Right. They mm-hmm. begin to treat you and give you more responsibility as they see you growing towards womanhood or growing towards mm-hmm. manhood. And they begin to impart certain other levels of information that they couldn't share with you. That, sure. these, that these weird scientists want to now bring into the elementary school classroom Mm -hmm. yeah and talk about gender and johnny has Mm -hmm. two daddies Mm -hmm. and all of that and they want to teach that to your five-year-old yeah so that shows you that they are way off kilter when it comes to the fitra they are not acknowledging the fitra and that's the root cause of all their problems right now Mm -hmm. but as our child begins to develop in the household we call it growing towards maturity but Mm -hmm. maturity is just an alternate way of saying growing towards nature Yes. And growing towards nature should mean growing towards an understanding of the fitra. Because yes. the fitra is represented by nature, form and mm-hmm. function in nature. Mm-hmm. So we cannot achieve this maturity for our loved ones, for our children, and for ourselves until we begin to pay more meticulous attention to what Allah has created as instructing signs mm-hmm. around us. And Allah says, up there, instructing signs called ayat. He says, in the earth. Ayat, and then he says, and in you, meaning the human, mm. there are similar ayat. But then Allah goes on to say, but most people paid no mind whatsoever. So that's the yeah. problem. People are not paying attention to the fitra. Mm. So, so that's really the quagmire that we're in now. And it will not be resolved until people begin to pay more attention to their own form and function. Decrease the amount of attention you're paying to the form. Yeah. To to the eye eye makeup in the morning woman or to yeah, yeah, you yeah. know the whatever, you know, mm-hmm. making sure you're always groomed and all, you know, well kept and all of that at all times. Even, you know, as you go to bed, you want a wrinkle less pajamas, you know. <laughs> Decrease that and increase your attention to how you function. Yes. Because yes. the world will not continue to work with people who are becoming day by day more dysfunctional yeah so that's Mm -hmm. where the attention has to be paid so our students out there who are listening look up these words even if you think you already know them look Mm. up the word mature look up the word nature muslims who study the quran look up the word fitrah Mm. you know root letter by root letter and take notes don't just listen to us like this is not entertainment as dr no this is we don't do this for entertainment value not at all We do this for the purposes of sharing what it is we've been gifted with by God Mm -hmm. uh, with our broader listening audience so that Mm -hmm. your life might be enhanced and improved. 
Mm. So this is not for brownie points. This is not for likes and shares, although that's a nice thing. <laughs> but that's not why we do this. We do this because we believe that we've been given a gift that is to contribute in a way to help bring all humans who are of this particular mindset back to the round table. Yeah. You see? And mm. I want to just conclude with a point that was made by Imam Wadith Dean Muhammad before he passed mm. in 2008. He said that he was talking to humanity theoretically speaking. Mm -hmm. And he said that we are about to sit down at the table of the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. He said, and it is a round table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a square table, not a rectangular table, like the one that they say Jesus sat down at for mm -hmm. the last supper. That was a rectangular mm -hmm. table with four corners. Mm -hmm. This one is an even Stephen chance at being heard because it's round. There is no head of the table in this fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. so I believe that the cosmic processions, processions of the equinoxes, changing of the guard in the skies and the heavens and whatever they want to call it in the zodiac language. Mm -hmm. I believe that the cosmic seasons have changed and we're out of, or at least on the cusp of being out of the signature called Pisces, the inverted fish. Yes, one fish yes. going this way, another one going mm -hmm. that way. We've been under that for 2,600 years. Whites go that way, blacks go that. They used to have literal signs in the South. <laughs> this yes. colored this yes, way, yes, whites yes. that way. That's yes. because we were in the sign of Pisces. We were in that mm -hmm. signature. Women go this way, men go that way. Mm -hmm. Older people go there, younger people stay there. See, we had all of these discrepancies in our language. Mm -hmm. based on artificial separations of yes. that which Allah had ordered to be joined. Allah says, cursed are those who yeah. break asunder what Allah has ordered to be joined. Yes. He yes. said yes. to the cosmos. It begins right at birth already. They take the mother, they take the baby away from mother and put her in a little basket yeah. in a that? separate room, separating right yes. away. With no yeah. titty milk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with, with carnation. With no yeah, no and, tender, no tender. Touches, no tender. You know, in fact, it, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned mm, an experiment. Yes. I believe you mentioned an experiment. Yes, I did. It was two two weeks ago. Very it, cruel. It's very cruel. It's very cruel. Evil is yeah. what it is. Yeah, Evil. To, to, to not allow these babies in these mm -hmm. incubators to have any human contact. Okay. They would feed them with bottles oh, through, through the bassinet or whatever they were oh, in. They, would yeah, feed yeah, them with yeah, yeah. they wouldn't oh. pick them up. They changed their diapers and they put them mm -hmm. back down. And yeah. as you mentioned, every single they all died. babies died because a human died. being is born as a gregarious creature yeah. by nature. That's the fit of yeah. humans to be in That's contact. That's nature. We it's have to have contact. contact. We have to have touch. Yeah. We have what happens, to have what touch. happens then when you have an overlay of artificial separations called social distancing? <sighs> That's well, a conversation for maybe next week. We create dysfunction. Uh, yeah. Yes, we. I think so, brother. I, I think that we've... Uh, we, we should probably end here, give yes, our students and listeners a, a chance to maybe listen to this again, mull over, contemplate what it is that Allah has shared with us yes. here in this particular conversation. And uh, I always look forward to these conversations, to these exchanges. Always and um, I always look forward to what it is that Allah uh, shares with us through them. Because we seem to draw things out in each other, which is necessary. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a real dialogue. Wow. Alhamdulillah. Wow. So with that being said, brother, may Allah bless our listeners with clarity of thought and clarity of hearing. So that they may begin to understand exactly uh, what their function and purpose is as mature humans. Beautifully put. Not as props. Forget the acting. Stop it. You got to bring these two, the male and the female, together in the proper form. It can't be pretense. You can't modify the form and just call it what it isn't. It can never be what it isn't. No matter how much surgery you do, no matter how much cosmetic uh, makeup you do, it can't be done. No. It can't be done. Yeah. You have to find out who you are, establish your identity within this limitation, because there are limits. 
You can't expect, you can't overstep those limits. These limits are there. Allah has placed them there for a purpose. So you find out what that purpose is. You understand the function. Understand this. You've got a function. And you have to pursue that function. You have to perfect it to your best ability so that you can bring your vision together first within your own identity and then join that to the community. So you can sit at the round table of this fifth dimension that Brother just mentioned. Indeed. And You're as not going to get there. One of our uh, yeah. soul artists said back in the 70s in a song, yes. he said, yes. the function is at the junction. Yeah, his function at the junction. <laughs> With that being said, brother, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll have uh, part two, maybe of the same conversation.